Hello and welcome into End on a Make. Uh, today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the rule change that's kind of had everyone talking over the the first week or two of the season, and that's the uh, the NBA cutting down on foul calls um, across the league. Foul calls and free throws are at I think historical lows. Um, I know it's only two weeks into the year, but I read something that said if the pace that the the league is at right now held true for the season, it would be the lowest amount of free throw attempts per game in the history of the league. It's under 20 right now at about 19.7 or 19.8 free throws a game combined, which is crazy to think about when you think about how dominant free throws have seemed to have been over the last couple years especially. And of course, when you change rules like that, you're going to get a lot of... Um, interesting results across the league and a few players have seen uh, their normal numbers their stats their efficiency all kind of take a hit um, because of this rule change and I don't think the rule change specifically is to blame for all of it but uh, in the case of someone like James Harden who has kind of been made the poster child for this rule where they're saying you know we're not going to call those foul baiting f fouls that you normally get where you know you see him driving into the paint and like hooking a defender's arm or initiating the contact on a jump shot, kicking his feet out. So the league has said, hey, we're going to crack down on that. And as a result, the man James Harden is getting buried <laughs> out there on NBA Twitter and across the league because he has struggled. He's really struggled to, um, to find his rhythm. And I think on one hand, it shows just how important generating those free throws has been to his rhythm over the years. But I think also, you know, when you think about how long we've watched him play that style of basketball in Houston and not as much in Brooklyn last year after the trade. But for those years in Houston, we watched him go to the free throw line like over 10 times a game. He had games where he was getting 15 to 20 free throws. And with as efficient a shooter as he was you had this choice where defenders were like, well, if I go near him, he's going to generate a foul somehow. And if I leave him open, he's going to hit the shot. And it made him unguardable. It made him uh, the dynamic player that he is, or more of the dynamic player, I should say. And now, this year, he's attempting three free throws a game. And not getting that has really visibly distorted how he's playing. Um, he's still, it's funny, if you look at his stat lines, he's still posting like across the board like, James Harden type of stat lines with rebounds, assists, but the free throws are down, so the scoring is down, but also he's shooting inefficiently, and when he would have those games before where he would go 5 of 20 from the field, he would still end up with 25 to 30 points or more because he was getting all those free throws, and so not having the free throws has really plateaued his scoring, and because of this rule, because he's not generating the free throws that he normally would, defenders can guard him more straight up they don't have to worry about hey he's gonna hook my arm and it's gonna be a foul and as a result they can you know they can guard one-on-one -on -one. they can focus on Durant they can guard all of the role players that the Nets have and the Nets in in response to that have kind of come out sluggish um they played tonight so who knows James Harden might have 45 and this video will be irrelevant right after I post it but it's just interesting. It's interesting to watch. And he's clearly frustrated. I don't think he's fully recovered from whatever lingering hamstring injuries and stuff he had as well. I think that might be part of it because he doesn't look like he's up to game speed quite yet. And I don't know if that's being, you know, trying to still use those old foul baiting types of tricks or if it's just, you know, he doesn't quite have his legs under him. He doesn't quite have his conditioning back. And I think it's funny, too, because he talked about, you know, being unfairly judged as, like, the, the face of this rule. And then Steve Nash said the same thing. He said he didn't think it was fair because there's fouls that aren't getting called now that are actual fouls. And it's funny to me because Steve, Steve Nash, like, buried Trey Young last year for basically the same thing that James Harden was doing with the foul baiting and the, the generating tons of free throws. And Steve Nash was like, Trey Young's ruining basketball. And, like, that's a pretty harsh thing to say when you have a player on your team who does the same thing. So, it'll be interesting to see. I think James Harden's a good enough player 
that he will alter his game once again. Maybe the scoring stays down, but I think the efficiency will get better too, especially if it's a health or basketball conditioning type of uh, type of issue that he's having on top of everything. But a couple other players are having this issue too. Like Trey Young is attempting four free throws a game, which is down from close to 10 last year. And he's been really vocal about his um, displeasure with this rule. He's saying that, you know, he's an undersized point guard. He should be getting calls going to the rim because the contact is always there. And, you know, on the one hand, I understand. But on the other hand, it's also, you know, it should be hard for a young player or a small player to get to the rim. Like, that's why you have those big players is you want to protect the rim. So there's always going to be incidental contact when you try to drive to the rim. It does put a lot of onus on the refs to make the calls. And if they decide early, hey, we're not going to call that tonight, that can get that could get um, out of hand quick. But it also makes me wonder about the playoffs because the playoffs always kind of, they have that let them play type of mentality. So I'll be interested to see what happens then. I know that's a long ways away. We're only two weeks into the year, but it's just a thought. Like I wonder if they adjust to this whole style of play this season to then get to the playoffs and have the refs change again how they're going to call everything it's going to be interesting to see those teams adjust for those first few games um and then a couple other players that i don't think are being mentioned as much in the conversation about like is this rule really hurting how they're playing because it's kind of been under the radar for them but devin booker and damian lillard are both also um averaging like near career lows in free throw attempts um, Damian Lillard's at about four and a half and Devin Booker's at about three and a half. So these are those players that are so good at generating contact, so good at finishing through contact that I'm sure, you know, they're used to the whistle blowing. So I'm sure there's instances where they're just throwing the ball up after expecting the call and the call never comes. And, you know, there you go. There's another inefficient shot. So I think it's going to be an adjustment period. I think a lot of these players don't really go full full steam ahead in the preseason too. So I think these first couple weeks of games might be, you know, feeling out the refs, feeling, seeing how the games are going to be called, getting, you know, getting your shots up, getting back, like kind of like what you would use a preseason for. Um, so I don't know what that says, but to me, it just kind of feels like this is something that's a huge story now because these players are still trying to adjust to it. Um, but I think in a couple weeks, in another couple weeks or so, it might be a non-issue. Um, overall, I really have liked the changes that this rule has had on the league and watching games night to night. It feels like everything's at a faster pace. It feels like the games are more up-tempo. It feels like there's more basketball being played. It, like, watching some of those teams, it can be close to unbearable, where it's, you know, it's a free throw every time, down one end, down the other end, down one end, down the other end. Like... It gets so old, and I know that that was something that was turning off a lot of viewers that weren't diehard basketball fans. It was really turning off that that casual fan base that the NBA is trying to get. So I think on the on the you know on the front of how it impacts the game, I think this rule has been good so far. I think it's going to help keep the games uh, fast paced, high scoring. I think it's going to put more of um, an emphasis on just getting open shots. I think we'll see threes probably taper off a bit. Like right now, teams are at a blistering pace for three-point attempts too. But I think that we'll see that kind of... I think we'll see the threes decrease and the mid-range increase. Like that, that's the thing that I think is going to be the biggest shift as this rule, as players adjust to this rule, is they're going to, you know, rather than drive in and risk not getting the contact on a shot, I think they'll settle for those mid-range a bit more. So it'll be interesting to see for sure. I will say too, though, my friend sent me a tweet that uh, someone had about James Harden that just said he was Larry Sanders now without the free throws. And that's brutal. These The people are just burying James Harden out there. I think he'll be fine. Um, let me know what you think about this rule, how you've enjoyed uh, the season so far. And if you think this rule really is exposing some of these players, or if you think it's just something that they have to, you know, adapt to and learn from. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I will be back soon. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the video or want to see more. Uh, thank you for watching.